A cancer diagnosis brings up a tornado of emotions, fear, despondency, even guilt over the perceived burden on family and friends. So how does one forced to fight the inevitable find mental balance? Joining us is Brandy Benson, a veteran, cancer survivor, and mental health advocate. Brandy, so good to see you here today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. So May is mental health awareness. And so we're trying to shed light on on a subject that is often taboo, even as much as we're talking about it now. So what would you say are some of the things that you'd like people to understand as they're going through this journey? Well, first of all, we're human. Um, we're not robots. So you're going to be feeling tons of different emotions. You're going to be going and experiencing different things. And it's normal to have these emotions that are going to come up as you're going through life. Um, being able to recognize your certain triggers or if you have any at all, avoiding certain areas, but just knowing that this is a part of life and being able to accept it and kind of learn from these um, experiences and then use those as tools for the future is definitely something that's going to help individuals who are going through some sort of emotional trauma, physical trauma, or mental health issues. But um, it's, it's all normal. It's completely normal. And reaching out and asking for help is very important. Yes, which a lot of people find very difficult to do. Now, you're a veteran, and I want to thank you for your service to this country, Brandy. But I would think that being in the military, that somehow mentally strengthens you. But mm -hmm. what was it like receiving the cancer diagnosis. When was that? And what were you diagnosed with? Um, I was diagnosed in 2009 in January. I was deployed in Iraq when I first got my diagnosis. So I was, I was overseas fighting for my country. I then have to leave war early to fight an enemy inside myself that was literally trying to take me away. And I had something called Ewing sarcoma cancer, which is a very rare and aggressive cancer. About 10,000 people worldwide will have a sarcoma. And it's very hard to survive with this type of cancer because it spreads really easily and it goes to the brain stem, the lungs, the spinal cord. So uh, early detection is very, very, very key with this. So not only is a cancer diagnosis just so scary, but you're also told on top of this that it's a very rare form of cancer and quite fatal. Yes. So when you discovered that this was all taking place within your body, how did you deal with it? Well, a lot of people ask me that. And, and first of all, it's, I was in denial because yeah. I was only 24 when I got the diagnosis. I didn't oh. know that it was possible to have cancer in anywhere else but the breast or the brain or lungs or the brain um, or, uh, you know, brain cancer. Uh, it's probably because that's all that's really kind of out there in the news right now, and that's all we know about. So when I got cancer in my leg, I didn't know that was something that was possible. And so I was in denial for a very long time until I saw, I saw it um, just getting bigger and, um, you know, I was getting sicker. It, it just, I was in denial for a long time. But as time went on, I did have to accept the diagnosis and kind of push on. But I was depressed. I was scared. I had a lot of anxiety. I was hopeless. I had a lot of individuals who I was... Uh, confiding my feelings into and they would pass away. Mm. I just didn't know how I was going to live. And, you know, according to statistics, my cancer was uh, more aggressive. And I'm thinking, how am I going to live if these individuals who on paper, their cancer isn't as uh, harsh, yes. how am I, I going to live? So it was just really hard at first. I, I can imagine. So Brandy, when you discovered that you were finally in remission, first of all, how long did it take you to get rid of the cancer? What then became your mission as a cancer survivor? Uh, yes. Yeah, so I was originally diagnosed in February in 2009. I was considered cancer-free. Um, I believe it was September 29th of 2009, but I still had to finish out my treatment regimen, which was over 90 rounds of chemotherapy in less than a year. So it was extremely aggressive. But after cancer is over, everything is done. Like the really hard part is the mental wellness um, and having the tools or the skills or the coping skills to kind of deal with the scan anxiety or the anxiety or the depression, survivor guilt, 
um, those types of issues. I had a lot of that going on and it took quite some time to find some resources that I felt were beneficial and fit my style and complimented me. But mm -hmm. after cancer is over, it's kind of the real deal starts to happen and that's trying to keep the cancer away. It's almost like it, your, your mind is so consumed while you're in it mm -hmm. and you have a support system, you have doctors, you have people who are around you constantly trying to eradicate this cancer from your body. But then once it's gone, you're unleashed into the world and then you just have to kind of figure life out. Yes, exactly. And you, so there's no blueprint really because everyone's different. Everybody's yeah. body responds to treatment different. When you, when you get into chemotherapy and treatment, you're one person, but that individual prior to that is no longer the same person. So you leave completely different. You just experience immense amount of trauma, either the, the physical aspect of surgery or your friends might have passed away and you watch that happen. So you completely change and it just takes a lot of time and um, understanding that, uh, that, that, that it's okay, you know, to have this going on right now. And as a result, you develop some coping skills. So when we come back after the break, I want to hear what those coping skills are and how you're helping others in the community get through this experience. We'll do that in two minutes. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. During the month of May, we're shedding light on mental health awareness. We have been talking with Brandi Benson. She's a veteran. She's a cancer survivor and she's a mental health advocate. And you've just been sharing your story of once upon a time, living a normal life, joining the military, being deployed, and then having to come back after being diagnosed overseas, which in my mind is just frightening enough being in the middle of, of a war zone and then having to receive this kind of news. But then the cancer after very aggressive treatment went away, you came out of it a new person. So what were your coping skills and what are those skills that you can impart on others who are watching this right now? So I believe you have a couple of different choices, okay? So you can live in the past and just be kind of obsessed with what used to be, how things used to be. Or you can now embrace this new individual who you are because, again, you're not the same person. You just experience a huge amount of trauma. So you're different. You're a different person. Um, yeah. Your experiences are different. So just learning this new individual. For me, I had a, um, a muscle taken out of my legs, so I had to learn how to... Um, do physical activities again. I have to learn how to love myself again. I had to learn how to walk. I had to learn what, what is this new Brandy Benson? What is she capable of doing? So you got to explore these different avenues of who this new person is because you're not the same person you were before you were diagnosed. So that's first thing is rediscovery. And the different coping skills I used was I went to a lot of um, counseling. I did mm -hmm. sessions. Um, I was able to find peace in the beauty and being vulnerable because it's so important to ask for help when you need help and not to feel ashamed of asking for help or letting people know that you aren't feeling well. Um, journaling, meditating, exercising, eating well, um, just doing the things that you feel that are going to be the best for you to be the elite version of yourself. But yeah. you just kind of have to, you know, uh, reorganize that so it fits your new style of the new individual that you are. Well, you are a shining example of all of those things that you've put into practice and an inspiration to people who are suffering right now. So where can people find more information? How can they connect with you? And what are some of the things that you're doing in the community? Yes, well, they can follow me on my social media accounts. And then my email is brandy at brandy L. Benson. It's pretty easy, but uh, definitely reach out to me. I have a lot of individuals that reach out to me about cancer. It doesn't have to be cancer, um, but if it is, I'm always there. And I know how, how important it is to have a strong support system. And what better to have somebody um, than somebody who's already been through those steps. Of course. Oh, absolutely. And, and that's what we've been talking about. It's power in numbers. It's having the support system around you and being able to confide in others who are going through the very same thing, because it's, it's difficult for someone who's not been through that to really understand what the person is experiencing and going through, what their reality is. So Brandy, thank you so much again for your service to this country, for being a survivor and for helping people right here and beyond. Thank you in, so much. In the fight of their life. Thank you. Thank you.
We're back after this.